So moving up in our video series, we reach to the proxy cache plugin, which is one of the really handy tools, especially for high scales, which caches the response for known requests and reduces the load for the upstream servers. But also it'll have its own disadvantages. So stick with me in this video and find out. Hello and what's up guys, medium guy here and in this video we'll try to use the Kong API Gateway's proxy cache plugin deployed as a docker container and also I hope you've been watching me in the previous videos where we try to deploy and use many plugins that Kong Gateway provides us in its free version and in this video we are continuing our way to learn and test out all the plugins that we are able to use so without any delay let's get down to work so in a total overview as you see in here as always we have some clients and our backend services which are serving our application maybe some api providers maybe some servers that are serving static html files or whatever and here we have our api gateway in the middle of the client and our backend services so the thing that this plugin does is when a client makes a request to our backend services with known URLs, our API gateway will check if it has the relevant response for the specific request and if it does, it won't make a request to the upstream servers and it'll return the response for that specific request because it has cached the exact same response and it didn't need to make the call for the upstream servers. So this is a total overview and also it has its own challenges. Like for example, we have some data in our backend services and we have its copy in our API gateway and in this moment a client tries to make a change in the backend service and API gateway doesn't know about that and another client tries to get those data and the API gateway will check the request and see it has the data and returns the data that it has without the changes that the other client had made to the main data that is stored in those services. So this is one of the challenges that comes with caching. Also caching has many other challenges and many other disadvantages. I hope you read all about these before you try to use this plugin and because of this reason we always try to cache those data that are not changed at all or they are changed in a long period of time. So going to the official documentation of Kong API Gateway here it says that this plugin provides a reverse proxy cache implementation for Kong. It caches response entities based on a configuration response code and content types as well as the request method. It can cache per consumer or per API and cache entities are stored for a configurable period of time after which subsequent requests to the same response will refetch and restore the resource. Cache entities can also be forcefully purged via the admin API prior to their expiration time. So this is a summary of what this plugin does. Moving down, here we have the basic configuration to enable the plugin globally. So I'll try to copy this. I'll move to my terminal here. If you have cloned my repo, you'll have all these files, which I'll put the links down below. So I'll hit ls, I have my config file in this config directory, so I'll say nano config kong.yaml. So I'll try to paste the configuration in its relevant place in the plugins section. I'll remove the extra plugins and here I'll try to save the file and here we see that the response code will be 200 which is okay and the request method will be get and head. The content types that will be cached will be text plain and application JSON and the cache TTL will be 300 seconds 
and the strategy will be memory. So if we move to the official documentation, here we have the available parameters that we can pass to this plugin. So here we have response code, which by default are 200, 301, 404, and the request method, which is also by default get and head, because it is only logical to cache the get requests, because if we cache post requests, the request won't be reached to the servers, and maybe if we wanted to save a specific data, it won't be saved in the database. So the content type, which is by default text plane and application JSON. The point in here is that if our content type headers value is application JSON with char set of UTF-8, it will be bypassed and won't be reading the data from the cache. So we have other parameters. Here we have cache TTL, which is by default 300 seconds. We have the cache control, which is a Boolean. And when it's enabled, it'll respect the cache control behaviors defined in this URL, which I'll put the link down below. We have the storage TTL, which is the number of seconds to keep resources in the storage backend. This value is independent of cache TTL or resource TTLs defined by cache control behaviors. And we have the strategy, which is the backing data store in which to hold cache entities. The only accepted value is memory. So I'll go back to the configuration. I'll save the file. I'll exit and here I'll say docker compose up. So my con gateway will run. And as always, I have an echo server in a random port and a route with slash echo pointed to that service. So if I refresh here, I'll see that the response is coming from the upstream server. And in another terminal, I'll try to access the echo server's logs so I'll say docker logs dash f for following the logs and I'll say node proxy echo server and in here I'll see all the logs for the upstream server. So here if I hit refresh I'll see that the response has been logged to the output. So this shows that the Kong has made a request to the echo server. So this is because if we come here in the inspect section and in the content type section, we have the application JSON with char set of UTF-8. So here I'll try to copy this. This is why the Kong plugin is not caching our requests because the content types that are defined in the configuration does not match this content type. So I'll go back to the configuration file in here I'll paste whatever I just copied. I'll hit save, I'll exit, and again, I'll try to run my con gateway. I'll hit refresh in here. If I go to the logs of my upstream server, again, I'll hit refresh, and this time I see that there is nothing logged to the output. So this shows that the plugin is working successfully. And again, if I change my request, for example, I'll pass a random parameter. I go back to the logs of the echo server. Again, I see that the request has been sent to the upstream server because Kong didn't have the response cached for this exact same request. Again, if I refresh, I'll see that there is nothing logged to the output of the echo server. So another point I want to show here is that the headers that the Kong sends if it caches the data. So here we have the cache key that is stored in the Kong gateway and the cache status which is hit. So we have multiple statuses available for this header. If we scroll down in here in the relevant section, we have the cache status section. We have the values miss, hit, refresh, bypass. For miss, the request could not be satisfied in the cache. 
but an entry for the resource was not found in the cache and the request was proxied upstream. For the heat, the request was satisfied and served from the cache. The refresh, the resource was found in cache but could not satisfy the request due to cache control behaviors or reaching its hard-coded cache TTL threshold. For the bypass, the request could not be satisfied from the cache based on a plugin configuration. So these are all the statuses for the cache status header and for this case it is a hit. If I change the parameter, it should not be hit. So the cache status is missed because it was not satisfied in the Kong plugin. So as I said, there are disadvantages and there are problems for using this plugin and caching data. So as we saw, I am now getting the response from the proxy cache plugin. So I'll go back to the terminal and I'll hit control C. I'll try to stop my echo server. So I'll say docker stop. I'll provide the name. So my upstream server, which is my echo server is now stopped. And if I try to call it straight, I'll see that there is no response. But if I try to call it from the Kong gateway, I see that I get the responses successfully. And here I get the Kong rate limit exceeded error because I exceeded my rate limit. So next time I'll try to remember to increase the number for the rate limit plugin. So that's all for this video. I hope you get the idea behind this. If you want me to go deeper in this, just go ahead and ask me in the comments section. Please don't forget to watch the previous videos and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next videos.